welcome to today's tech tip video in this video I know we just got our phantom wallet done and we're ready and we're gonna go ahead and swap for some Jupiter and show you a little bit about the Jupiter uh, system how you can stake your Jupiter and how you can get rewards and other things with Jupiter so let's go ahead and go to the website jupe.ag because I know that that's their website um, here's the swapping platform you'll notice a little bit right out the gate here it's very similar to what Uniswap looks like and I have not connected my wallet so I'm gonna show you how to do that we're gonna go connect wallet uh, they do allow magic Eden but we're gonna go ahead and do phantom um, we just set that wallet up it's my wallet of choice so we're gonna connect that wallet with two easy clicks and now you can see that our phantom wallet is connected over here now if we did want to go ahead and swap, and I'm not going to do it yet, we wanted to swap our Solana for Jupiter. Let's go ahead and say we wanted to use 15 Solana. You can see we have 20 Solana in the wallet. Um, Jupiter should be one of the top ones up here. Surprised it's not, which whatever. We're going to hit the top one, and a swap is very similar to like you'd swap in any other wallet. So we can go ahead and hit that swap. We have to do a confirmation in the wallet if we wanted to. Waiting for the wallet transaction. It's going to pop up our Jupiter transaction. It says it's going to be reverted. Oh, this is, I'm glad that this popped up. So it says it's going to be reverted. This just means the price changed a little bit, which uh, the reason being we have a really low slippage set right here. So we're going to increase our slippage uh, when I do the next one. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to increase it to a custom slippage. I don't care. 1% is usually what I set all my slippage at on pretty much anything. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. Did I save it? Uh, yeah, I saved it. Anyway. So we're going to save that. We're going to go 15. We're going to go ahead, ahead and do the Jupiter swap and go ahead and try that again. It's going to wait for that to pop up. And then we're going to go ahead and confirm that transaction. See if it goes through this time. It usually does confirm pretty quickly if it goes through. And if it doesn't, then it won't work here. Ah, uh, looks like it confirmed that time. Okay, so we're good to go there. Let me show you what that looks like. Uh, it takes a couple times, very cheap. So now you can see Jupiter up here and you can see Solana right here. We have five Solana and 2200 Jupiter. We're good to go on that. So let's go over to the uh, governance portion of Jupiter. Now this is kind of where you can see all the votes and everything. And I'm going to show you how this works. So if you wanted to stake your Jupiter, this is where you would do it. You would connect your wallet. Because this is actually, you can see that the web address changed. This is vote.jupe.ag, okay? So you connect your wallet. Um, here, i got to refresh the page and restart that connection now. But you can connect your wallet with a phantom wallet. I'm going to go ahead and connect it because I've connected here before and I know it's just fine. Um, and everything usually works. Uh, maybe, oh, I just had to be more patient. Everybody chill out and relax, okay? So you can stake your Jupiter. I don't think there's a really an unstaking period um, here at all. Um, do, 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 do. Oh yeah, receive tokens after 30 days. So I think you get a portion of your, your Jupiter back um, for a period of time over 30 days and your, to your voting power actually reduces over those 30 days as well. So um, while it's unlocking, you get decreased voting power. Yeah, so keep that in mind. There is, a, I think, a 30-day unlock on that. So once you've staked your tokens, you can then vote on these proposals. So for example, this last one was the proposal on which token they're going to have release on their launch pad. So they had DeBridge, Divi, Exchange, and I think I, I voted for DeBridge. And it's cool because you can click here. It's very, it's set up really well so you can participate and go click here and you can go view the discussion. And here's where you can kind of go through each one of these different proposals. So we're going to go to DeBridge. And we're actually going to go check it out because I want to show you a couple things over on the bridge. It's a bridge similar to what is already built within the Solana platform here. So remember when we uh, did, let's say, we wanted to swap for, let's say, for Solana for some USDC on Ethereum, which is a cross-bridge swap. So there's going to be more fees. So $594. So it's basically saying one. Ooh, it's expensive. Oh boy. Basically Solana is maybe it's that cheap right now. I don't know. Maybe things fell quite a bit since I started recording this video, but Solana a second ago was 170. So it might be 154 now. Who knows? Uh, no, it's still 169. So the fact that you're getting 150 on Solana on that swap is 
Horrible, guys. Horrible. So, select. If I wanted to swap USDC, look, I'm getting 672 if I stay on the same chain, 168, so there's not much of a hit. If I want to swap to Ethereum, I'm basically losing because it's using this. It's kind of used like an arbitration type bridge. It's only going to give me $148 per Solana, which that's a $20. That's a haircut. Don't do that. Okay, you lose 100 bucks on that little trade. So let's go ahead and see how much the bridge costs if we were to launch this app and make this swap. So I'm going to connect the wallet to the bridge. Uh, you'll notice that it actually accepts quite a few different wallets, and I'll tell you why here in a second. So we're going to connect that. Boom. So let's just say we want to swap Solana. Okay. Solcoin. We're going to just use, we have, boom. Uh, I don't think you understand, but I connected my wallet and I have that much. So, okay. So it's good now. It's reading it now. And let's just say I want to swap for Ethereum USDC coin. So we can get a, what a match right away. Holy crap. That's a really good bridge. Oh, geez. Okay. So this is really cool. Um, so I could enter a MetaMask address and it would, wow, this is really, okay. That's a really good bridge. Like, I honestly don't think 170 times four is 680 bucks. You're basically losing $3 on that bridge. That's one of the best bridges I've seen. So that's really good. Not only that, but the bridge has not released their token yet, as we found out over on Jupiter, which is really cool. Okay, so as you use this bridge more and more, very similar to Jupiter, the people that use Jupiter prior to it having a token, when Jupiter launched, they got a farming airdrop of Jupiter tokens, which is really cool. You can use this bridge and actually start to farm tokens here. So you'll get 238 points, which could potentially go to a future drop, which I'm going to explain that in a second as well, which is really cool. So I could enter my Ethereum address. I could enter any address. So it could go to my MetaMask wallet. It can go within my Jupiter wallet. So if I wanted it to go to within my Jupiter wallet, I would actually have to go up here and I would have to click on the Ethereum address and then I would paste that address here and then I would just go ahead and confirm the trade and then that would swap across here. Boom! Easy, easy, peasy, peasy. I could also, it looks like, send it to a couple different wallets maybe? I don't know about that. Okay, whatever. It just shows you the routing, which is cool. So confirm that trade. If I wanted to swap the Jupiter for USDC on ETH, this is cool. What other tokens do they have here? I am shocked at how cheap that bridge is. That was one of the cheaper bridges I've seen. And it looks like you can't go Bitcoin, but you can go Solana Ethereum, which I've done quite a bit of. And typically I lose more than that because I have to go into Kraken, sell my Ethereum, swap it into Solana, then send it to a wallet and then swap it into Jupiter or whatever. And it's been costing me a little bit more than that. So that's really, oh, guys. I know I'm like awestruck here. Anyway, so super excited about the DeBridge project. So back to the vote voting. I voted for the DeBridge project. And if you use that bridge more and more, you're just going to get more tokens uh, for the airdrop coming up from DeBridge. And not only that, but the Jupiter DAO is going to receive about 0.75% of the token supply. So as soon as it launches, if you voted and you're staking, you're automatically going to get an airdrop as well. From the debridge project even if you voted for one of these other projects and they failed you're still going to get a drop from the debridge project so it's kind of cool now if we go back here to um the governance as you can see 75 percent of launchpad fees that are all jet generated about 50 million jupiter are going to be dropped to token uh stakers jupiter stakers on in july and so once that happens you're going to get a percentage of that based on how many tokens you have staked and I know it's not as easy as staking like some of the other things that we stake and we get a, a percent APR and stuff. It's kind of like a future hope for a drop. But this is very commonplace in the decentralized world for airdrops and that kind of stuff when you're farming airdrops. This is what's happening over on Blast DeFi. This is what's happening. This is what happened uh, on the Jupiter thing before Jupiter launched and everything. So this is actually very common for staking protocols to use this method to drop airdrops. And it kind of sucks because you can't see, oh, I'm getting 10% per day. 
but it usually works out to be a pretty good drop. So I have it staked and I'm hoping that it's going to be a pretty good drop. So we'll see how this thing works out. Anyway, that's how you stake your Jupiter. Now, a couple of other things with Jupiter, um, if you are going to use it, obviously set your slippage and stuff. It doesn't have some of the mean coins that are in the radium liquidity pool, which I don't really care because I only want to use the projects that are more useful and I th they're just a little bit better. You can actually set uh, DCA purchases up so you buy once a week Jupiter um, over, you know, like 15 orders if you want. So like, let's say I want to buy it for the next 15 weeks. I can set up a Jupiter purchase uh, every week for the next 15 weeks um, and I could spend 0.25. So it would buy um, oh minimum of uh, three years to about four to five. Anyway, so it tells you you have to do the total, but you can set that up if you wanted, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, it has some more features over here. Um, I really don't use those a lot. A lot of people do. I don't mess around with that. I only do swaps. This is sometimes gets it into some leverage and stuff over here, but I would not worry about that. But the whole Jupiter platform is really cool. So I think the token itself is really cool as well. And it could be a good option if you want to get into that ecosystem and kind of play those uh, airdrops, the staking, and some other stuff in the meantime while this meme coin season hits up. So hopefully that explains things decently well to where you can get your stuff staked and set up for you to vote on the next pro Oh, the proposals. Let me just tell you one more thing too here for the governance. So the only downside with this is you got to kind of keep up. So these proposals come every once in a while. This last one was May 22nd through May 25th. Okay. So you kind of got to check back here. And if you're following um, these guys over on X or whatever it is, they announce when they're coming up and they'll give you a heads up. Hey, this proposal is coming up. So you, you don't have to go check the date on May 22nd. I think they announced this one on May 1st. It's like, hey, it's coming up on May 22nd. So you can set a calendar reminder, come and vote on it. Use your governance, come and vote on it. You'll get put in the airdrop and you'll be good to go. So easy peasy. And I think that's pretty much it and all there is to it. So hopefully that helped you guys out. Everything uh, Solana that we really need to talk about right now. And you guys can get off to the races on that one. And if you want more tech tip videos just like this one, go ahead and go to nickblackdex.com. Put in your name and email and get set up for these tech tip videos. We'll send those out to you and we will see you in the next one.